Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Who is the God of Israel? I want to introduce one line to you, and let's just see where it takes us. In 1 Chronicles 4 and verse 10, the first line of that verse says, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. Who is the God of Israel? Let us go back to the beginning. In Genesis 12, we hear an introductory word from God to a pagan man called Abram. He was 75 years old and his wife Sarai was barren. I will make you into a great nation, God says, and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. When Abraham finally got to this land, God said to him, to your offspring, I will give this land. First of all, Abraham needs to have at least one child who will continue what has not even happened yet. If you will make a great nation out of me and my offspring will get this land where I'm presently standing, then are you saying that I am going to become a father? Well, sometime later, we read in Genesis 13, the Lord said to Abram after Lot had parted from him, look around from where you are to the north and south, to the east and west. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go. Walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. Then in Genesis 15, we read something further. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that for 400 years your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and that they will be enslaved and mistreated there. But I will punish the nation that serve as they serve as slaves, and afterward they will come out with great possessions. You will, however, go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here, for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. Clyde, will you get to the point? Well, at 100 years old, after his name had been changed and all, Abraham, who had had a name change, like I said, became father to Isaac. And God told him that this was a promised child, notwithstanding that he had fathered a child with his wife's servant, Hagar, who they called Ishmael. Isaac had twins, Esau and Jacob, and Jacob had a name change. In Genesis 32 and verse 28, we read, Then the man said, Your name will, be, will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob, or Israel, went on to father 12 sons, the 12 tribes of Israel, and some other time we will explore some details, but that family ended up in Egypt and after a while, they became slaves in Egypt. 400 years of brutal slavery. Remember that prophecy? Well, one day God met a Hebrew named Moses and told him, The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Well, that journey out of slavery to Canaan started, and early in their 40-year trip, Listen to this. Then Moses went up to God and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, this is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles wings and brought you to myself. Now, 
If you obey me fully and keep my commandment, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. The journey took 40 years, not because Canaan was so far from Egypt, but because along the way, the Israelites, they offended God with idolatry and lack of faith and all those kinds of things. And God just simply slowed them down until the older generation had died out. Well, they finally got to Canaan led by Joshua and they took possession of Canaan. That is a brief outline introducing you to the God of Israel. But I want you to go back to the first message that God gave to young Abraham. And there is a line in it which says, And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. In Galatians 3 and verse 16, we read something crazy. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people but and to your seed, meaning one person, who is Christ. You heard me correctly. God created a way to fulfill that last line of Genesis 12 and verse 3. Jesus was the promised seed, and that is going to shock you and make you excited both at the same time. Are you born again? Then the God of Israel is your God. What evidence do I have to support that? <laughs> so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to use one line to show you that you are significant in God's books, that you are precious. In fact, I want you to hear God's words speaking over your life today from 1 Peter 2 verses 9 and 10. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. My friend, that is your relationship with the God of Israel.